Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of South African folklore written down by James A. Honey. In the first story, a lion pretends to be a woman, and the kraal mother needs some milk. In the second story, Jackal gives the son a piggyback ride. And in the third story, Horse messes up and is cursed to no death. Okay, let's begin. The Lion Who Took a Woman's Shape In the old days there were some women who went out to seek roots and herbs and other wild food. On their way home they sat down and said, Let's taste the food that we have gathered. Now they found that one woman's food was sweeter than honey, and another woman's food was more bitter than tears. The latter said to the others, Look here! This woman's herbs are sweet. Then they said to the owner of the sweet food, Throw them away and look for some more. So she threw away the food and went to get more. When she had collected a sufficient supply, she returned to join the other women, but could not find them. So she went down to the river, where Hare sat scooping water and said to him, Hare, give me some water so that I may drink. But he replied, From this cup? Only Uncle Lion and myself can drink from it. She asked again, Hare, bring some water to me, so that I may drink. But Hare made the same reply. Then she snatched the cup from him and drank, but he ran home to tell his uncle of the outrage that had been committed. Meanwhile, the woman put the cup back in its place and went away. After she had left, Lion came down, and seeing her in the distance, he followed her down the road. When she turned around and saw him coming, she sang in the following manner. My mother, she would not let me seek herbs. Herbs of the field, food from the field. When Lion finally caught up with the woman, they chased each other around a shrub. She wore many beads and arm rings, and Lion said, Let me put them on. So she lent them to him, but then he refused to give them back. Then they chased each other around the shrub again, until the lion fell down and the woman jumped upon him and kept him there. Lion mumbled a spell and said, My aunt, it is morning and time to rise. Please, pray, rise from me. Then she rose from him and they chased each other again around the shrub, until the woman fell down and the lion jumped on her. She said to him, My uncle, it is morning and time to rise. Pray, rise from me. He rose, of course, and they chased each other again, until the lion fell down a second time. When she jumped on him, he said, My aunt, it is morning and time to rise. Pray, rise from me. They got up again and chased each other, but the woman at last fell down. But this time, when she repeated the previous spell, lion said, Hika, is it morning and time to rise? He opened his mouth wide and ate her, taking care, however, to leave her skin whole, which he then put on, together with her dress and ornaments, so that he looked just like a woman, and he went back home to the kraal. When this counterfeit woman arrived, her little sister cried and said, Sister, pour me some milk. She answered, No, no milk for you, little one. Then the child addressed their mother, Mama, please pour me some milk. The mother of the kraal said, Go to your sister and have her give it to you. The little child again said to her sister, Please pour me some milk. She repeated her refusal, saying, I will not do it. Then the mother of the kraal said to the little one, I refuse to let your big sister seek herbs in the field, and I don't know what may have happened, so go to Hare and ask him to pour some milk for you. So the Hare gave her some milk, but her older sister said, Come and share it with me. The little child went to her sister with the bamboo cup, and they both slipped the milk out of it. While they were doing this, some milk was spilled on the little one's hand, and the older sister licked it up with her tongue, the roughness of which drew blood. This, too, the woman licked up. The little child complained to her mother, Mama, sister pricks holes in me and sucks the blood. The mother said, When I sent your sister away and forbade her to gather herbs, 
she had the spirit of a lion in her. Now the cows arrived, and the older sister rinsed some pails in order to milk them. But when she approached the cows with a strap to tie their forelegs, they all refused to be milked by her. Hare said, Why don't you stand in front of the cow? She replied, Hare, call your brother, and you two stand in front of the cow. Her husband said, What has happened to her to make the cows reject her? These are the same cows she always milks. The crow mother said, What happened this evening? These are the cows which she always milks without assistance. What could have affected her so much that she comes home like a woman filled with a lion's nature? The older daughter then said to her mother, I won't milk these cows. And with these words she sat down. The mother said to Hare, Bring me the bamboo cups so that I may milk them. I do not know what has come over this girl. So the mother milked the cows, and when she was finished, Hare brought the cups to the big sister's house. She was there with her husband, but did not give her husband anything to eat. That night when she fell asleep, they saw some of the lion's hair, which was sticking out where he had slipped on the woman's skin, and they cried, Truly, that is not our sister. That is why the cows refused to be milked. Then the people of the kraal began to destroy the hut in which the lion lay sleeping. When they took off the mats, they spoke a magic spell. If you are friendly to me, O mat, give the sound sawa, meaning moving in silence. They said to the poles that hold up the house, If you are friendly to me, O pole, you must give the sound gara. They also addressed the bamboo cups and bedskins in a similar manner. Thus gradually and noiselessly they removed the hut and all of its contents. Then they took bunches of grass and put them over the lion and lit them and said, If you are friendly to me, O fire, you must flare up, boo boo, before you get to the heart. So the fire flared up when it came towards the heart, and the heart of the woman jumped upon the ground. The crow mother picked it up and put it into a calabash. Lion, from his hiding place in the fire, said to the crow mother, Your daughter was delicious. The woman answered, now you have a comfortable place in a burning hut. Now the woman went to the cows with calves and took their first milk of the day. She put it into the calabash where her daughter's heart was, and the calabash increased in size and in proportion as the dead girl grew inside of it again. One day when the crawl mother went to fetch wood, she said to Hare, By the time that I come back, you must have everything nice and clean. While her mother was away, the girl crept out of the calabash and returned the hut into good order, as she had done in the old days. She said to Hare, When mother comes back and asks, Who has done these things? You must say, I did them. After she had finished, she hid herself on the shelf. When the crow mother came home, she said, Hare, who has done these things? They look just like they used to when my daughter cleaned them. Hare said, I did it. But the mother would not believe it, and she looked in the calabash. Seeing that it was empty, she searched the shelves and found her daughter. Then she embraced and kissed her, and from that day the girl stayed with her mother, and she did everything that she wanted to, like in the old days. But now she was single again. The End Okay, and story number two. Why does Jackal have a long black stripe on his back? It is said that one day the sun was sitting all the way down on earth, and the men who were traveling saw him sitting by the wayside, but they passed him without notice. But then Jackal, who was following after them, also saw him sitting. He went to him and said, Such a fine little child that was left behind by the men. Then he took the sun up and put it on his awa skin, or as we would say, on his back. When it burnt him, he said, Get down, and shook himself. But Sun stuck fast to his back, and burnt Jackal's back black from that day. The End
Okay, and story number three, the final story in this group. Horse is cursed by the sun. It is said that sun was once on earth, and there he caught a horse to ride. But it was unable to bear his weight, and so ox took the place of horse and carried sun on its back. Since that time, horse is cursed by these words, because it could not carry the sun's weight. Beginning today, your life has an end date. This is your curse, that you will have an exact time of death. And day and night shall you eat, but the desire of your heart shall not be at rest. Though you grazed from morning until sunset, behold, this is the judgment which I pass upon you, said the sun. Since that day, horse has had no peace with such a heavy curse. The End I really liked in the first one how the lion and the woman were chasing each other and saying spells. And the daughter coming back to life was pretty cool too. There was a lot of loose ends in there. A lot of, okay, what about the husband? Why are they gathering herbs? Why was sweet herbs a bad thing? Why did mom not let her go out? They just seemed like it was an incomplete story. All kind of mashed together. But in the second and third stories, it was cool to see the son interacting with different animals. The third story had some really convoluted sentences with all sorts of mixed up grammar and I had to rewrite a bunch of it just to make it make sense. If you want the original, it is available for free on Project Gutenberg. And always a big shout out to Project Gutenberg and Internet Archive for allowing me to find these public domain books that are not available in any library near me. So big shout out to Project Gutenberg. And the podcast shout-out is to Fabulous Folklore Podcast. Hosted by I.C. Sedgwick, she goes through folklore, tells stories, and takes you all around the U.K. to different haunted spots and spots where fairies are and all sorts of wonderful folklore. And if you like I.C.'s show as much as I do, go and give it a listen, a rating, and a review. And the listener shout-out is to Naga in the Philippines. Its official title is Pilgrim City of Naga. People have lived there as long as the islands have been populated, but it wasn't considered a city until the Spanish said so in 1575. It is considered the heart of the Bicol region. Its name, Naga, comes from the Bicol language and refers to a pretty cool tree, the wood of which makes blue and yellow liquid when water is poured into it. I'd really like to see that in person, and of course I would like to visit there. The Philippines is high on my list of places to go, and the language today is Bicol. So I say to my listener in Naga, I say, Salamat na marhe and tage. Thank you and cheers. <laughs>